Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to create a flat vector badge, like the one you see here. Now what do I mean by flat? Let's take a closer look at the finished object we will be creating today. If I move my mouse over this object, you can see that it is, it is a single object. If I apply a gradient, or toggle the stroke, you can see that it is treated as a singular. Now, in this tutorial, we will be covering some simple techniques in order to produce this quickly and speed up our workflow. We will be learning how to create a symbol, we will use the blend tool, and we will be using the pathfinder tool, focusing on the shape modes and creating compound shapes. Later, we will be taking this shape, and I will show you how I cut texture out of the vector shape. Let's take a closer look. You can see here that this artwork is the same as the one to the left, but we have some detailed texture cut out of the vector shape. And I will be showing you how I produce this. I will be demonstrating this in the next video, so if you're not interested in how I create the badge and just want to learn how to cut texture out of a vector, I suggest you skip to the next video. But if you're interested in how I create the badge and want to learn more about these techniques above, then stick around and I'll show you how. So let's get into it. During this tutorial, we will be referring to this object here, and as you can see, we will be working from the inside out. We have a circle, we have some strokes, we have a ring of stars, I will be showing you how I do them. Um, actually, I haven't manually put them in place, we will be using that blending tool and creating that symbol. I'll show you how to do that very shortly. And we will also be creating this outer ring with all the points. So, let's make a start. Okay, so we're going to start with our ellipse tool. Quickly make an ellipse. And we're going to create a stroke around that. So let's quickly swap our color. Whoops. De Deselect that. Switch our colors. And let's draw another ellipse. As you can see here, I'm pressing shift and drag to get a nice even circle. Little tip here for those who are wondering on you know how how to quickly align shapes. What I like to do is I like to select both and come up to the top here and align horizontal and align vertical and that and that really helps if you don't have the options up above you can go to window and click on align to pull up that window there okay so let's buff up that stroke there okay that will do nicely I'd like that to be a little bit more intimate with that center circle again with the align tools that's looking fine um, let's have a quick look at our reference. So we've done that one. We want to do this outer one here. Okay. That one needs to be fairly larger. Let's try that. Let's buff up the stroke. And I think that's looking pretty good. There you go. And lastly, one more. Put the stroke down a bit. That one. Let's put it in a little. And that is looking pretty good. Okay, next up. We are looking to create the outer ring with, with all the points. Easily done. What we are going to do is we are going to start with the star tool. And what you might notice doing this for the first time is that when you left click and drag, you will have what looks like a star. And this is what we are going to use to create that outer ring. Now, if we move back and forth, we can toggle how big the star is, but I'm about to give you some 
pointers and how to toggle the, the points. With your left mouse selected, press up and down on your keyboard. And we can toggle the amount of points we have on our, so, on our star. Okay, so we're looking to have quite a few of these. But next up, not really liking the size of those points there. They're looking pretty pretty big, not really liking them. So, once we've pressed up and down on our keyboard, we can actually toggle the height of those points. If you're on a PC, you can press Control, or if you're on a Mac, press Command and Hold, and move your mouse up and down, and you will be able to toggle the size of those points. Nice. Okay, so I think I'd like something a bit like that, and just leave go of the mouse and that's looking that's looking nice there looking quite nice not too bad at all not too bad okay it doesn't really matter right right now what we do but I'm gonna fill that in I'm gonna quickly cut that shape but I'm gonna move off the canvas so I can deal with this shape here paste next I'm going to get the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw another ellipse. And let's change that to white. Okay, okie dokie. Select both objects, align horizontal and align vertical. Um, not, not too bad. That's not bad effort. Let's just tweak that. Yeah, I think that's looking good. Align those. Hmm, there we go. Now what we're going to do here next is we're going to cut this circle out of that outer ring. If we look here, this is this has been cut out and we're going to go for that effect. So let's go back up to our shape and we're going to simply select both objects. I'm going to go down to the Pathfinder tool here. Now if you don't have the Pathfinder tool already open, you can go to Window and click Pathfinder. And if we look at these little buttons down here, we can see there's a visual representation of the desired outcome. We want to cut this um, circle out, a, a bit like cutting, cutting dough out of a cookie dough. We're going to cut it out. So if I press this one here, exclude, boom, you'll notice that by default, Illustrator renders it white. But if we just select, select our color again, here we go we've got it and it's a solid object. It's going to cut that, move back to our move back to our artboard and paste it in. Just tweak the size a little. Let's align that. And that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. We are now ready to move on and put the stars into the middle. Okay, so let's go back to our reference image and we are going to create this ring of stars. And there's a few little techniques we're going to do to do this. First of all, preparation. We are going to create a stroke in which our stars are going to be orientated. Okay, let's have a look at that. Maybe a bit smaller. Let's line this up. That's looking, that's looking fine. You want to try and get this, um, this stroke centered so it's about equidistant from there. And what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the, the stroke color. We want it to be there, but we don't want it to be full. And that will become apparent shortly. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a symbol. Quickly look down here. We have symbols. These are predefined in... Illustrator and these are quick reference quick reference shapes that we can use as and when we, we, we want but in this case we're going to create our own so we're going to create the star so we're going to create and select the star tool now what you might find let's quickly go off canvas you might find that it still has all the uh, criteria of what we did last time. It remembers what we did last time. So what we need to do is we need to bring these points down again by pressing on our keyboard up and down and by pressing the command on a Mac or control on a PC 
We want to get back our star. That's looking... That looks about... Right. And let's fill it with our colour. Fill that in. Let's cut that. Bring it back in. Okay. We want that to be a bit smaller. Let's have a look there. Move it into place. How does that look? That looks just about right. Now, to create a symbol, we take that star, we click and drag it into our symbols. It'll ask us to, to name our new symbol. I'm going to call it star, and we're done. So I can get rid of that star, and I can bring all the stars in as much as I like. Job done. But here comes the blend tool. So let's take our star and we're going to bring in another star, select them both, come over to our tools and you'll see one of the tools called blending tool, W, hotkey, click it. We're going to select once in one star and twice on the other star, boom. And what you'll notice is that the blend tool sort of bridges the gap and sort of copies the star. You can see if we move the node around, it's just sort of, you know, following on. And you can customize how many stars that are between by double clicking on that blend option and change the options. But we're not going to do that here because we don't really need that. Next up, remember that stroke we put in the middle? Well, select that once. Select our star. And this is the important part. Object. Blend, replace spine. Would you look at that? It's put all the stars on that stroke. But annoyingly, there's this space there. Now, the way I deal with that is I go to our pen tool here and click and drag and select the add anchor point. You know that because it's got the plus. And just look about you know where you where you want to end it. Let's just click once on the path. Make sure you're on the path, not out, but on the path. Click once, and there you go. The stars have been placed along that stroke, and I must say I'm pretty happy with that. 